Hello guys, my name is Shambhu Nath Mishra and very welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to take my ISIS discussion a little further. In this video, we will try to establish a theory of troubleshooting and we will try to uh, get more familiar with ISIS protocol with the help of verification commands. If you understand this process completely, then this will give you a very good confidence in ISIS protocol. So let's see, I have enabled four routers here uh, in my network. This is one XR router, then I have CSR1000V router, then R2 is also CSR1000V, uh, then R4 and R3, all of them are CSR1000V routers. So uh, I have combination of iOS XR and iOS XC devices. So what is the first command which you'll run uh, in case you want to verify ISIS configuration or ISIS process on the on, on a particular router so my favorite one is show isis protocol I'm sorry show isis protocols it gives me a very basic details but it ensures me that isis is running fine on the router so it gives me uh, a little detail about areas which are configured on this particular router it tells me about the interfaces where ISIS is enabled and it also tells me about some very basic things like uh, normally static route is by default redistributed into ISIS. It also tells me about the distance uh, for the CLNS routes. It does not have any information about the IP route distance which is normally 115 and uh, yeah it also tells me about the kind of metric metric that i am going to use so there are two kind of metric in isis one is wide metric and one is narrow metric here it says that for both level one and level two uh, routes i am going to use the narrow met metric all right this is very basic command i have another command like show ip uh, protocols which basically tells me about all the protocols which are enabled on the router. In this router, I see that ISIS protocol is running and then, you know, there is one uh, more routing protocol which is called application. Uh, not to discuss here, I'll uh, try to discuss about this particular uh, routing protocol later in some other video. But my focus here is ISIS routing protocol. So in this command output also, I am getting similar information as show ISIS protocol command. Let's see that what are the other information we get from this particular command. So we are getting ISIS core uh, process name, which is the ISIS process name I, I have given. We know that what are the different interfaces over where ISIS is enabled this is a little different this is this uh, information says that uh, there are different routers in the whole network from where i have received isis information and here we also have the default metric for the ip uh, prefixes so good this is a very good command and after this once i verify that the isis process is running completely fine on the router and uh, you know i verify that it is enabled on all the interfaces where I have enabled it. I'll move to the next command and I'll check if the adjacencies are learned on the router or not. So for that, first of all, I'll do CLNS neighbor, show CLNS neighbor. So uh, ISIS is based upon CLNS. Earlier when we did not have IP address, uh, ISIS used to work on this these SNPA addresses. So basically what this particular command is telling me is uh, there is one neighbor R2 and there is another neighbor I, uh, iOS. This iOS neighbor is nothing but my iOS XR device, this particular device. So what it is telling me is uh, that there are two neighbors uh, they are, which are connected respectively with gig2 and uh, gig1 and gig2 and their SNP addresses are this and uh, with those two neighbors I have ISIS adjacencies build up and the whole time is also uh, given in this particular command. Here we also know, know that what is the circuit type. So on top of this, uh, let's also check show ISIS neighbor. So in ISIS neighbors also very similar command. 
just in place of SNPA we have IP addresses now here is something something very interesting normally in Cisco routers we have Cisco discovery protocol right so here if I do show CDP neighbors uh, CDP is not enabled because in many cases uh, people found CDP as potentially unsecure protocol so normally they'll disable uh, Cisco Dis discovery protocol so in those ca cases, how would you try and find out uh, uh, the neighbors? So if you don't have CDP and for example, if you even if you don't have LLDP, etc. So what is the method? How would you find out the neighbor which is connected over a particular link? ISIS gives us an alternative for the network where uh, ISIS is deployed uh, definitely you would not deploy ISIS just to serve the purpose of CDP if CDP is not enabled if ISIS is already deployed in the network there is a TLV uh, in, I, uh, in ISIS LSP basically which consists the host name of the device for example here in a router 1 if I am uh, receiving one LSP from router 2 then in that LSP the uh, router 2 would embed its host, host name also so i have done a small packet capture here i'll show you how it looks this one lsp i have received if i expand this host name here i found that the host name of the device is also given so it tells me that this particular lsp is coming from router 4 on the router this particular information helps us a lot so if I do show ISIS neighbor, I see that I am receiving LSP from R2, I am receiving LSP from iOS XR router and R2 seems to be sending LSP over gig1 interface. That means R2 is connected over gig1 interface. So you don't need CDP or LLDP here to identify that what are the devices connected to connected over your core interfaces because you have isis running and isis provides you host name and also the interface over which uh, the routers are connected so this thing i found very interesting and it it is always very very useful when you are trying to troubleshoot something in a network where isis is deployed now consider a case that you are not able to reach to one of the prefix on r4 router from the r1 so when you try to ping uh, that particular prefix from R, uh, R1 to R4, it is not pinging. So now how would I find out that R4 router being one of the node in ISIS has sent me any information uh, so that I can reach to those prefixes which are configured on R4. So for that, I have this command show ISIS database detail with this particular command you can actually check all the prefixes that you have received from that particular router so here it says that from the r4 router which is also a part of these areas uh, where the host name is this and metric is default metric i have received these many ipv4 prefixes and i have received these many ipv6 prefixes that means it tells you that I have received a database from uh, R4 router and this database should go to my routing table also. If I don't have it in routing table, I have it in uh, ISIS database, that is a different story. This is a very useful command here, uh, you know, uh, with metric and uh, the IP prefixes, everything. We have a very good information about the ISIS database now uh, let's come to the most interesting part of this discussion which is called uh, spf algorithm so there is a command show isis spf log i found this table very interesting and i mostly always run whenever i try to troubleshoot any isis related protocol i mostly always run this particular table it tells me about the churning in ISIS. So basically, it tells me about uh, any frequent SPF recalculation or any LSP update which I am receiving for any particular router. For example, here, if you see that R2 is, uh, is sending me some dead adjacency LSP uh, TLV content, or maybe here some iOS XR router is sending me some uh, you know, TLV content which is triggering the full SPF table recalculation. 
so uh, if you see that there are so many route churns etc are happening and you are trying to find out that from where it is coming this is a very good command to find find that out uh, you will have to check this in real time because if it is happening very frequently then this table unfortunately saves only top 20 you know updates top recent 20 updates so you'll have to check it on a real time basis be uh, because if something has happened today and you are trying to find the rca for that particular event and you run the command after two days you mostly would not receive anything so in order to understand all these triggers cisco has this very good document where all these triggers are explained for example this tlv content right it says that tlv content changed and this normally indicates that adjacency somewhere in the area has come up or gone down and it also tells that last trigger lsp column indicates where the instability may have occurred so it says last triggered lsp although but on router i see that it is first triggered uh, trigger lsp so looks like this document needs a little update but uh, that's totally fine uh, we got the point let's get into a little more depth i have two exercises to do uh, what i need to find out is i need to find out that what are the different triggers which can cause the lsp recalculations although i see these these uh, these uh, listed triggers here but still i want to do some changes in my network and i want to try to find out uh, that if those changes are causing lsp trigger or not so question for you uh, for example if i go to this network and if i disable this particular link for example on a router 2 i go ahead and shut down gig 2 do you think that will that will cause or full spf recalculation on router 1 uh, let's go ahead and try to find that out so uh, i'll run this command one more time it says that the last recalculation happened uh, periodically so every 15 minute we by default run that spf recalculation to maintain the sanity of the isis database so that is totally fine uh, this is not a problem at all but let's see i'm going to shut down the interface on router 2 and let's see if i'm receiving any further triggers uh, which is triggering the full lsp recalculation so i'll go to router 2 and sorry, interface gig 2 shut down excellent let's run the pro this command again so we have received this trigger tlv content trigger from router r2 which has triggered the spf full recalculation so which means that if i change anything in the isis topology i am going to receive a full spf recalculation trigger on the uh, on the router and that is what has happened now i am going to quickly uh, enable this particular link all right so i have enabled the link now now the second point of uh, the exercise now for example i have different prefixes advertised into isis for example here i have loopback one also advertised into isis now what do you think if i shut down this particular loopback will r1 do the complete spf recal uh, recalculation there's something to think about right let's see let's go ahead and try to shut it down and see if r1 is going for a recalculation or not so i'll go to interface loop back one i'll just shut it down uh, the loop back one has ip address 2222 so ip route 2222 so i see that in r1 i don't have ip route now let's see the spf log okay so here we don't see anything which we have uh, received very recently from router 2 that means if i disable this particular loop back on router 2 it is not causing the full spf recalculation on my router okay so this is very good to clarify that there are two events happening in the network in one event 
uh, we are just disabling one of the interface which we are advertising into ISIS but that interface is not basically a part of ISIS topology so if I disable that particular interface this ISIS recalculation or ISIS full recalculation would not happen will just remove the entry from the routing table and if I if I am uh, doing any change which is affecting the ISIS topology basically then in that case only the ISIS recalculation or ISIS full SPF recalculation will happen and in order to see that this is a very good command which you should um, you know keep it handy and as I said run it whenever the issue is happening because it only saves latest or very recent 20 events thank you so much for watching the video I'll end this video here if you have not already subscribed to the channel please go ahead and subscribe to it thank you so much have a nice day keep learning